Kobe and Vanessa Bryant's marriage was a relationship roller coaster. It weathered family tragedy, a sexual assault charge, and even went as far as divorce proceedings. So what was their relationship really like? Vanessa and Kobe didn't meet through basketball, they met through music. According to the Los Angeles Times, in 1999, when Vanessa was only 17, she was leaving a concert in Irvine, California, when she was approached with an offer to appear in music videos. She gave the man her number and was cast as a backup dancer in several videos. What shocked her friends the most was that her mother agreed to the gigs, considering how sheltered Vanessa's childhood was. A friend of hers told the newspaper, "...she was in a Crazy Bone video, and then she got called to be in a Snoop Dogg video. She got to lip-sync to the part where Snoop Dogg does the hook." The friend described Vanessa's costume on set as a metallic bikini and heavy black eyeliner, so she was certainly catching everyone's attention. Her mother attended the filming as a chaperone since Vanessa was underage at the time. Meanwhile, Kobe was also embarking on a music career in 1999 and was actually signed by Sony Records, according to Billboard. Vanessa was offered to appear in one of Kobe's music videos, and it was love at first sight. Vanessa and Kobe got engaged only six months after they met. Kobe would contact her through a pager, and Vanessa wasn't shy to share the exciting news with her friends. She was still finishing high school, and when she told her classmates who she was dating, they were skeptical. One former student told the Los Angeles Times, "...she'd bring pictures of Kobe to school and we'd all be like, oh my god, I remember there was one of him playing with her puppies, and she would only let us look at it, we couldn't touch it." Even then, a lot of people didn't believe her, but then he gave her that massive engagement ring, and that shut everyone up. Another friend said of Vanessa, "...it was just Kobe this and Kobe that. It got so that that was all she or anyone could talk about." To me, he was Kobe Kobe. Her parents, however, weren't exactly thrilled. Her stepfather, Stephen Lane, said, "...he was an adult and she was only 17, and it was like, hey, wait a minute." Kobe and Vanessa did end up waiting until she turned 18 to get engaged. Their relationship also caused Vanessa problems at school, according to E. Kobe would send flowers to her at school and pick her up sometimes, which would cause a frenzy among the students. At the suggestion of her school, Vanessa finished her education through homeschooling. Kobe and Vanessa got married on April 18, 2001, in Dana Point, California. While it was a happy day for the couple, the wedding caused major family friction. Allegedly, Kobe and Vanessa never signed a prenuptial agreement. Vanessa's stepfather told the Los Angeles Times, "...she just came home one day and said something to the effect that Kobe didn't want a prenup, that he loved her too much." "...I was his first girlfriend, his first love, his wife, his best friend, his confidant, and his protector." This was all too much for Kobe's family, especially his father, Joe Bryant, who was also an NBA player. And while the Bryant family was concerned about the financial aspect of the marriage, they also worried about Vanessa as a match. Their racial differences were a problem for the family, as was her upbringing. Compared to the very prestigious rearing that Kobe had, Vanessa didn't seem quite up to snuff. The publication pointed out that she had grown up in a Garden Grove tract house, while Kobe spent his childhood in Italy and the affluent suburbs of Philadelphia. Nevertheless, they went ahead and married without a single Bryant family member in attendance. In fact, none of his fellow Los Angeles Lakers came to the wedding either. It was an extremely small private event. Kobe's agent, Arn Tellum, didn't even go, according to E! News. And the assumption was that his agent was also concerned about the lack of a prenup. Kobe and Vanessa kicked off married life by moving into a $4 million mansion in Newport Beach in 2002, according to E! Their new lifestyle was certainly different from Vanessa's previous life. Suddenly surrounded by security and rubbing shoulders with famous people, the task of juggling her former self with her new identity seemed to be challenging. A former classmate told the Los Angeles Times, "...she'd take Kobe to places where people from high school would see her, like the Block of Orange or TGI Fridays, and then she'd get mad when people tried talking to him." Vanessa's step-cousin even told the newspaper, "...I remember at one point she had this sort of identity crisis. She told me she was starting not to know who she was anymore, other than the wife of Kobe." The life of an NBA superstar's wife would certainly be a huge adjustment for her. For her 19th birthday, her husband bought her a yellow Lamborghini that had to be customized since Vanessa could only drive an automatic. And for the girl who once worked at the mall, she now could suddenly buy the entire structure. Things apparently settled down for her, however, on January 19, 2003, when Kobe and Vanessa welcomed their daughter Natalia. The birth of their first child was also the secret to mending the Bryant family rift, as Kobe's parents reconnected with their son after Natalia's birth. Life took a dark turn for Vanessa and Kobe in July 2003, when the NBA star was accused of sexual assault by a 19-year-old member of the hotel staff where he was staying in Colorado, according to Us Weekly. Though he was charged, he denied it, and the charges were eventually dropped after the accuser decided she would not testify. The same day charges were dropped, Kobe issued an apology per ESPN, saying in part, 
I also want to make it clear that I do not question the motives of this young woman. No money has been paid to this woman. Although I truly believe this encounter between us was consensual, I recognize now that she did not and does not view this incident the same way I did. Naturally, the events were trying on his marriage too, though Vanessa stayed by his side throughout it all. During a press conference, Kobe addressed his marriage in this broader situation. According to Us Weekly, he said, I'm innocent. I sit here in front of you guys furious at myself, disgusted at myself for making the mistake of adultery. I love my wife with all my heart. She's my backbone. Three days after Kobe was accused of assault, he gave Vanessa a purple diamond ring valued at $4 million, according to People magazine. The eight-carat ring was famously called the apology ring after Kobe denied the assault charges but admitted to adultery with a hotel employee. However, the idea of the ring being an apology is actually misleading. As a second report pointed out, Kobe had commissioned the ring two weeks before he went to Colorado from a boutique jeweler located in Santa Monica, California. Kobe, Vanessa, and their infant daughter Natalia went to the store together to pick up the final product. The jeweler told the mag, they looked very happy together. When they left, Kobe and Vanessa were holding hands. During Kobe's press conference, he turned to Vanessa and said to her in part, You're a blessing. You're a piece of my heart. You're the air I breathe. And you're the strongest person I know. And I'm so sorry for having to put you through this and having to put our family through this. Around this time, Kobe also got a tattoo in honor of her. It featured her name with a crown and angel wings, as well as the text Psalm 17, according to E! News. The psalm begins with, Hear, O Lord, my righteous plea. Listen to my cry. Give ear to my prayer. It does not rise from deceitful lips. Though Kobe and Vanessa appeared to reconcile after his assault allegations, the couple still had more challenges ahead of them. Early in 2005, Vanessa suffered a miscarriage, and Kobe took the blame. On the Showtime documentary, Kobe Bryant's Muse, he said, "...we were expecting our second child during that time, and there was just so much stress. We actually miscarried. I have a real hard time dealing with that because I felt like it was just my fault." But the reality is it happened because of me. Nah, that's the reality of it. Shortly after, in May 2005, the couple went to Laguna Beach to renew their wedding vows. He pointed out that this gesture was actually planned by Kobe. Years later, when he died in January 2020, Vanessa said in his eulogy that he wanted to renew their vows again and had plans to do so. She called him the romantic one in their relationship. He would do anything for me. I have no idea how I deserved a man that loved and wanted me more than Kobe. With a growing family and an off-the-charts career, Kobe signed an extension of his contract with the Lakers, worth $90 million in 2010. But despite seeming totally composed from the outside, Kobe and Vanessa shocked fans by announcing their divorce in December 2011. They had been together for 10 years and shared two children. The news was surprising, since she stood by his side during his assault allegations. Nevertheless, Vanessa filed her divorce petition with the Orange County Superior Court, according to E! News. The documents claimed irreconcilable differences, and unsurprisingly, talk focused on the rumors that they didn't have a prenuptial agreement. Vanessa's wish was for joint custody, but she wanted their children to primarily live with her. A statement by their publicist read, "...the Bryans have resolved all issues incident to their divorce privately with the assistance of counsel. We ask that in the interest of our young children and in light of the upcoming holiday season, the public respect our privacy during this most difficult time." Rumors swirled that Kobe had engaged in other extramarital affairs. According to the Daily Beast, other NBA wives informed Vanessa of these affairs. The wife of a former Lakers player told the news outlet, "...Vanessa isn't the warmest person or the nicest one. I think we enjoyed telling her about his affairs whenever we could." Despite the major headlines this garnered, however, their relationship was far from over. As surprising as their divorce announcement was, Kobe and Vanessa's reconciliation was even more so. In January 2013, the couple announced they were calling off their divorce. Vanessa wrote on Instagram, "...we are pleased to announce that we have reconciled. Our divorce action will be dismissed. We are looking forward to our future together." Meanwhile, Kobe jumped on Facebook and wrote, "...I am happy to say that Vanessa and I are moving on with our lives together as a family. When the show ends and the music stops, the journey is made beautiful by having that someone to share it with. Thank you all for your support and prayers." People read the change of heart as very romantic. Media personality Fred Mwangagahunga told The Daily Beast, "...you have to remember Kobe met Vanessa when she was like 16 or something. They've been together ever since. They have a lot of history together, both good and bad." He also made mention of the ever-present prenup situation, saying, "...I'm surprised she stayed when she could have walked away with more than $100 million. She must love him." Others apparently knew the two would get back together. Even in the midst of their divorce proceedings, Vanessa attended Kobe's games and they would leave the then Staples Center together, as NBC Sports pointed out. They couldn't seem to stay away from each other. Perhaps one of the most perpetually endearing things about Kobe and Vanessa's relationship was the way they related to their children. We try to give them a foundation of the amount of work and preparation that it takes to be excellent in whatever it is that you choose to do. 
In total, the couple had four daughters, Natalia, Gianna, Bianca, and Capri. Without hesitation, he said, I would have five more girls if I could. I'm a girl dad. Kobe was deeply invested in their rearing and their athletic abilities, something Vanessa endorsed wholeheartedly. He famously coached their daughter Gianna in basketball. If they don't win the tournaments, do you like, do they have to sleep in the yard or anything like that? Or? <laughs> <laughs> no food for a week. <laughs> Kobe spoke with CBS this morning about what was most significant about working with her. He said, making sure she knows that I love her, whether she plays well or plays like crap doesn't matter. You know, you're my daughter before you're a basketball player, and it's important that she knows that that's how I feel." And those aren't words. You have to behave that way. You have to show her that. After a tough game, you get in the car and it's forgotten. Not only that, but Kobe's love of storytelling and writing was also generated because of his daughters. He told the Showtime Basketball podcast that he started writing because there didn't seem to be anything out there that his children could relate to. He explained, I don't mean just from a diversity like the color standpoint, but from the fact that they're athletes and there's no story that speaks to athletes. It's all princesses. Right, you come out with a great idea, but if the idea lacks substance, lacks originality, if it lacks innovation, you're not going to get anywhere. Kobe also stressed that he wanted to teach them to work for their success. As Kobe and Vanessa continue to be successful in their marriage, the NBA star shared the secret to their happiness. When he sat down with Showtime Basketball in January 2020, he talked about how they made it work after nearly 20 years of marriage. Just, just commitment and competitiveness of we are going to succeed. He went on to say, We've seen couples that have been like 85 years old, and you look and you're like, oh man, such an old, sweet couple. And I'd go talk to them because I want to know. One time a guy goes, yeah, it's great, but she just kicked me out of the bed last night. I was sleeping on the couch last two nights. It don't change, man. It don't change. They've been married, you know, 70-something years, man. Kobe then explained, It's the constant ebb and flow of relationships, but that's also the beauty of it, and having the persistence and determination to work through things, very, very tough things. We've been able to do that. The video of Kobe's touching relationship advice was posted on January 9, 2020. Less than three weeks later, he and his daughter Gianna died, leaving Vanessa alone with their three daughters. The proximity of the video to his death was noticed by fans, and many returned to it in grief. One person commented, Only Kobe would use the word competitiveness to describe how he keeps his marriage when it's tough. We are going to succeed. Fascinating. I was fire and he was ice and vice versa at times. We balanced each other out. Vanessa faced her own hurdles in terms of legal drama after Kobe's passing. In the midst of her grief, she faced a lawsuit against her mother, Sophia Lane, who claimed that she worked for Vanessa and Kobe as a child caregiver and personal assistant without getting paid, according to the Los Angeles Times. Lane claimed that Kobe promised her financial support and that instead, Vanessa was bypassing his wishes. But according to Us Weekly, Vanessa was quick with a response, saying, "...she's continuing to try and find ways to extort a financial windfall from our family. She was a grandmother who was supported by me and her son-in-law at my request. She now wants to backcharge me $96 per hour for supposedly working 12 hours a day for 18 years for watching her grandchildren." Vanessa admitted that her mother occasionally babysat for the two oldest girls, but once they were full-time students and athletes, there was no need for additional childcare besides what Vanessa and Kobe provided. The case was closed in August 2021, and the details remain private. Additionally, Vanessa's case against members of the sheriff's office and fire department, who shared photos of the bodies found in the helicopter crash, was approved for a jury trial, according to USA Today. Her attorney said, "...the callous and shocking behavior uncovered by Mrs. Bryant is more than enough to survive summary judgment." With such an intense marriage and a love story that had survived some considerably rough patches, Vanessa has understandably had an extremely tough time getting through the loss of both a husband and a daughter. The widow told People magazine in March 2021 that it comes and goes. She explained, "...I can't say that I'm strong every day. I can't say that there aren't days when I feel like I can't survive to the next." Her focus has been on helping her three daughters, Natalia, Bianca, and Capri, get through it as well. She went on to say, this pain is unimaginable, but you just have to get up and push forward. Lying in bed, crying, isn't going to change the fact that my family will never be the same again. But getting out of bed and pushing forward is going to make the day better for my girls and for me, so that's what I do." In her eulogy for Kobe, Vanessa told fellow mourners that Kobe once bought her items from the 2004 film The Notebook. "...he gave to me the actual notebook and the blue dress Rachel McAdams wore in The Notebook movie." His reason, she explained, was because it's the dress McAdams character wore when she returned to Noah. Their dream was to grow old together, but life took a different turn. Vanessa went on to say, "...we really had an amazing love story." If you or anyone you know has been a victim of sexual assault, help is available. 
Visit the Rape, Abuse, and Incest National Network website or contact Rains National Helpline at 1-800-656-HOPE. That's 1-800-656-4673.